This tutorial provides an overview of the law relating to vicarious liability. It is possible in tort for one party to be vicariously liable for the acts of another. An employer, for example, will commonly be vicariously liable for the acts or omissions of an employee, providing such acts or omissions occurred within the course of the employee's employment. Employees. An employee is defined by section 230, subsection 1 of the Employment Rights Act 1996 as an individual who has entered into or works under a contract of employment. A contract of employment is defined by section 230, subsection 2 of the 1996 Act as a contract of service or apprenticeship, whether express or implied, and if it is express, whether oral or in writing. A distinction has to be drawn between employees and independent contractors. Although an employer will be vicariously liable for the acts or omissions of an employee, it will not be liable for the acts or omissions of an independent contractor. In Ferguson, it was held the description of the relationship used by the parties will not be decisive and the court will have regard to a variety of factors in determining whether an individual is an employee or an independent contractor. Historically, the control and integration tests were applied by the court in determining whether an individual was an employee or an independent contractor. As developed in Ewins and Noakes, the application of the control test has regard to the degree of control exercised by the employer over the individual. The greater the degree of control, the more likely the individual is an employee.